Hello and welcome everyone. I thought I'd change the pace from my usual videos and share a character design process from start to end, which is quite rare for me to be able to share. And um, yeah, so a process from the sketch that I made. I went for a ocean fish music theme for this particular artwork. And this was the first sketch I made playing around with these themes which I actually really do love. I love how I did the guitar because it was inspired by like one of those spiky conch shells. But I ended up going for more of a fish theme for the guitar since um, I selected the first character because I really liked how I made the hair look like a spiky conch shell and I was worried it was going to be a bit too much if I had both the hair and the guitar. kind of wanted a bit of contrast. And yeah, so I start initially, um, as I do with every, any process, uh, of character design, just start by doing all of the line work over the sketch. I went for a more of a clean, smooth line work for this one. I really try to keep the line work as uh, smooth and neat as I can when I draw over the initial concept sketch. I would like to try and use more sketchier lines and brushes in the future as I feel like that would be interesting to try more of. I usually tend to gravitate towards making my lines look quite smooth. And I'm trying to get a little bit better at using different line weights to sort of give a different impression of weight in the character. Um, sometimes it helps to add a little bit more kind of like life to it and it feels a little bit more dynamic. Oh, and then we come to the hands. Uh, if you've seen my previous video, you probably know that I'm not amazing at drawing hands. I'm not necessarily uh, unskilled at it. I feel like I've drawn enough to be able to uh, do them a bit more confidently now, but there's still some poses that they're in that can be a little bit awkward still to draw, especially this one where I had to get sort of the hand to cur curl <laughs> around the guitar. It really helps to have photo references for these types of things. I like to take my own reference pictures if I can. I've got my, I've got my phone, I've got a tripod clamp that I'm able to hook my phone to. And it really helps to get these sort of trickier uh, shots, sort of like bird's eye view shots. And it's really helpful though to be able to get a specific pose that you want. When you've got to get like um, the hands to pose in a certain way or just like sort of the body needs to twist in a certain way. And it just really helps to be able to do the poses yourself. Drawing the guitar was pretty straightforward. I went for quite a simplified classic guitar design for it. I do think back and think should I have gone for the conch shell design because I did really like how I did that but I thought it would be a little bit too much to have a character have a both a conch shell guitar and hair. I was worried it would be a little bit too too, too many spikes um, but I quite liked how I did this fish one. I thought it was just a nice little simple design and I planned on having it sort of like more shiny looking like so it looks like the inside of one of those shells. Uh, with all like the shininess to them. I went for a little simplified fish design to pattern the jacket with and looking back on it now I'm thinking potentially I added maybe too many fish to it. I'm wondering if it could have looked good with one fish on the side of the jacket, kind of like a little badge almost on it. It is tricky to know 100% if something's going to work or if it's not when you are at the sketching phase, usually it's when I then get to more of like the colouring and rendering phase that I then turn around and look at it and go like, oh wait, maybe maybe the other idea it would have worked a little bit better. Oh, and then I start on probably the most challenging part of this whole character design, uh, doing the dress folds. I am absolutely not anywhere near expert level when it comes to clothing folds. I cannot really work out how the sort of uh, folk, you know, like the the method behind it, how like the fabric all folds in on each other, is really something I need to practice and get better at. I was there like halfway through drawing, and I was like, oh no, like this is this isn't going well. Uh, I just sort of like to look at reference photos and just see what I can gather from that and how I can sort of add different types of folds um, from that. In the end, I did end up with something. I was pretty happy with. I, I, it wasn't perfect, I could see probably there's some parts in it that are um, mistakes. But in the end it did look, it looked good, which was the main thing for me. When in doubt, reference photos are your friend is what the lesson I've learned from this. After I get to a stage where I'm happy with the line work, I then go in and add all of the base colours down. I've tried to keep it as simplified as I can, I try not to add too many details yet. 
I do experiment with some colour palettes on the sketches beforehand just to see, have a, like a little bit of an idea of how it works. I don't know why but I was really um, determined to have the hair be like this sort of silver look to it. I think it's because I saw some reference photos of some shells uh, that were silver and then they had like these really pretty like rainbow patterns in them. So that was initially what my thought process was going to be for it. But obviously if you've seen the, the final artwork for this uh, video, I didn't go for the silver in the end. When I am filling in base colours, I usually don't fill it in with the colours I'm initially intending for it because at first I just want to make sure everything's within the, the line boundaries because sometimes it can be a bit hard to see um, on whatever background you're using so I just would choose like a really either like a dark or a really vibrant colour just so I can see initially what the uh, colours are looking like when I put them down within the line work. Sometimes uh, artists have their backgrounds done first, then they add the characters in, which can make it a little bit easier to see what colours you're putting down and how it's going to sort of look with the background. I was still a bit stuck on this part of what my background was going to be. I knew ex roughly what the colour palette was and I add it in later uh, when I am trying to work out more of the colours schemes, but for this I was just sort of putting down the base colours on like a white flat background which I don't know if is the wisest move but it usually ends up working for me anyway. It's really difficult though because when I say to myself alright I'm just gonna put down the base colours and that's it I then usually end up subconsciously trying to add in all of these details straight away and I need to kind of stop myself because I'm like no I need to make sure I have the background done first, all of the base colours down and then it becomes easier to know what colours to go for. I was really struggling with what kind of colour palette to go for the jacket. It seemed really great in the sketch but then when it was coming to adding the colours to it I was really getting stuck on it. I just didn't couldn't decide if it should be a plain jacket or if it should have a different patterning on it under the fish and it yeah, just got to the point where I was just experimenting with all of these different random combinations. Moving on to a later stage, I'm able to pin down what I want the background to be. I decided since the main character's got like a guitar, I thought it would be kind of fun to have the background beach with all of these washed up musical instruments. I've never really drawn many instruments, I usually avoid it because I know, especially with things like drums, they have all of the different metallic shines to them, which I don't really draw that often. So I thought since I don't draw it that often, maybe I should try drawing it more. So I, yeah, that was the route I went down. I really liked the idea though, it kind of like added a little bit more visual intrigue in the background rather than it just being uh, the just the beach by itself. It is difficult sometimes to determine how much line work I should do on background elements because you always worry that it could potentially draw attention away from the, the main sort of focal point of your artwork. So it was trying to get that balance between how much line work should I use for this, should I um, rub out the line work when it gets to the painting stage of it. I try not to worry about it too much since it's something I know that I'll figure out in a later stage anyway. So I just end up putting the base colours down first as it sort of helps me to focus my mind on what I could then potentially do with it. It does help to have the rough colour palette of the background sort of decided because then it's easier to know what colours to go for the um, instruments and it's easy to see then how it will look with the background. I think the piano was the instrument I was most pleased with how it turned out. I liked how I did the different buttons on the side, I made sure not to add, this is where I sort of meant where how I wouldn't add line work to everything because the buttons looked better I think without an outline around them, I think it would have made the, the piano stand out a bit too much if I did. I did give it a little bit of shading around the side and a little bit of details here and there but I, I made sure to try and get it to look more blended in with the background. I knew that if anything went wrong with the, the colours or the details anyway, it is something I could fix in a later stage when I had more of the background worked out. So I, I wasn't trying to stress about it too much since there was not much else I can do until I got to a stage where it's easier for me to visualise how everything was looking together. Working on the background I think was my favourite part of this because I absolutely love doing beach backgrounds. 
I love trying to get the different types of formations that the waves can make along the sand and the beach and how it interacts with different objects then. I used the lasso tool in a bright blue colour to map out where the sea foam was going to be so I could see how it would interact with all the instruments lying around. I would change this colour then to back to like a sort of white colour then when I had more of the background finish. This was just so I could kind of like see where it was going to sort of go, the direction it was going to move in and then uh, here I <laughs> change it back to um, a lighter colour and I start adding in some of the blues for the waves and the water. Something I really love when doing more beach ocean illustrations is where you can still see part of like the, the sand underneath. So here you can see the pink sand still underneath part of like the water. Because uh, obviously when the more shallow the water is, the lighter it is usually. So I just love how you can sort of still see a little hint of that beach underneath the wave that's just about to come in. And then after I've done the instruments, I add a more another lasso tool around the character then and how the sea foam is going to react with the character's dress. This, this was a bit trickier to think of. I was like worried maybe I should like try and make it a little bit more detailed around the character's dress, but I thought just keeping it more simplified usually works quite well. And then I go around with a bit of a texture brush on the foam, adding a little bit of uh, colour gradients here and there just to give it a little bit more shading. I did like in the end how I did the shading and the reflections of the instruments and the character on the beach. I kind of wanted it to have that, obviously the look that it's just had water on it so it's a little bit more shiny and reflective looking. There's definitely some details there I can see where the shading doesn't quite match up with the uh, perspective I went for. But in the end, I, it did look all nice together in the end, so that was the main thing for me and it, I knew it was something I could work on. I really liked how I did that shading in the right hand corner with the drum though, the slight bit of the blue hint coming from the waves, um, and then just the little subtle hint of the drum then in that blue part. It's, it's a, bit, a bit hard to explain, but I, I did like how that uh, looked visually. And then I start adding a little bit more details now to the wave, so I kind of wanted that feeling of direction that it was literally just about to come and uh, swoosh <laughs> swoosh into the, the beach. I loved the challenge of getting the balance between adding just enough but not too much detail to the wave itself. I wanted all of like these sort of under details of the water underneath, a little bit more hints of like the, the pink beach. And I also told some more waves then in the back behind this um, main focal point wave then. I was also trying to decide how much detail to add to the sea foam as well. Here I tried to add a couple more sort of greens and blues to it, a bit more shading and uh, softening in places. Again, just trying not add too much to it since I don't want anything to sort of draw attention away from my character. But I feel like I added enough just to give little hints of what the lighting and the shading is for it, little dots in places, like little nice textures. I kind of try and add a bit more now at this stage. I add some darker blues as well to under the wave to try and get, I was trying to get a bit more sense of depth to it and I add a little bit more detail then to the waves behind it then. Not too much because I didn't want to sort of draw attention away again, I, I wanted the background to be a bit more faded. Uh, it, it's definitely a balancing act with this sort of thing to, to get it just right. Oh and then, and then it comes to my, my, other, my very favourite part of the metallic shine on all of these instruments. This was something I did struggle a little bit with. I ended up just sort of making it a bit more faded in the background anyway. I felt like it was okay. I felt like it was okay in the end. I did follow some references, uh, but I think it's just something I'm going to have to practice to keep getting better at. This was hard as well to get the underside of the symbol, the one that's sort of more upright then. Uh, but I felt like it looked okay in the end. And then the keyboard, I think, looked the best of them, if I was being honest. I'm not sure. That might just be my own... Uh, sort of opinion though on it and yeah the microphone I, I liked how the microphone looked in the end uh, and the drum the drums was the trickiest I can't decide if the drums or the cymbals were the trickiest parts probably the cymbals um, because the drums were okay the drums were more just like the sort of uh, metal uh, surroundings of it that I struggled a bit with it was um, also something I was trying to consider was what colours go for the base of the drums because apart from the keyboard it was kind of easy to know what colours to go for the rest of the instruments because they were all metallic so you know you just sort of go for either like a silver or a gold. 
Uh, but I ended up just going for a blue for the, the drums in the end, and then I thought at this stage I just need to move on to doing more rendering on my character then. I start with playing around with some hair shading, I thought maybe go for like a dark red to contrast with the, the pink, um, and then add some more softer shades here and there. Uh, but hair rendering is something I also want to get a little bit better at, I'm gonna add that to the very long list I've got. It did look okay at this stage, I did end up tweaking it a little bit. I think something I want to try and do more of, which a lot of artists say help, is you know when you're making an artwork and then it's not looking good, you just get up and then you go away for like maybe like 20 minutes or something, because usually when you come back it can either look uh, usually it can look better is what a lot of people say. Um, I've done that before and then I usually come back and <laughs> it doesn't look better. <laughs> usually I'm like, oh, that actually looks worse. Um, but no, it does usually really help to do that and then it just helps you just sort of like, have a fresh eye with it then. I then play around with the colour of the line work too, so you know, I'll change the, the black outlines then to different colours. I usually just alpha lock it and then, you know, just sort of shade it in and see what looks good. I changed the hair shading a bit, so I, instead of going for like a darker red, I go for more of like a brighter, well not brighter, but like a sort of more of a purple look to it, which I think worked a little bit better in the red. I felt like the red might have been a little bit too harsh. It, it depends on the type of lighting you're going for. I think I needed more of my lighting worked out really at this stage. Um, doing the dress was fun though. I knew I wanted to have a really shiny look to the dress. I was inspired by like the inside of these sort of shells you can get where it like has really all these rainbow patterns to it and it's just really really pretty to look at. So that was the sort of thinking I was going for for this dress. I experimented with putting down some soft shading on it first in places. It almost looks like you know it's been sort of it's made all soaked by the waves and then I add like a pink outline to all of the different shading parts to it which I think is really nice subtle look. I, did, I did, was worried it was going to make it look a little bit too um, too much, but I felt like it was a nice subtle look to it in the end. Add a bit more shading around it, uh, sort of like how it's interacting with the beach and the sand and the water. Uh, a little bit up on the top as well. And then add a little bit more of the details then from the foam all around it when I had more of the dress worked out. I had more details everywhere, like the foam then around the instruments. It's nice that I liked it because it gave it more of a sense of movement, like the waves were moving in and out. And then when I was sort of happy with how everything else was looking, I then move on to doing the final rendering of the, the guitar design then. <laughs> Here, yeah, you can see I, I switched it up a bit. I, the initial sort of look for it wasn't working for me, so then I just went with a blue and just went all over it and then just started adding more shading to it then. It was tough deciding how much detail I actually wanted the guitar to have because this was supposed to be the kind of like the focal point of the whole entire piece, but I didn't want to add too many details to it as I was worried. It's kind of like um, a bit of a weird balance you got to get because you want to make sure it doesn't have too many details that it feels weighed down by it, but then it's not got enough details that it then sort of doesn't really have any kind of presence in the final artwork. Then I did like the blue guitar with the red jacket though, I felt like that was a nice little use of complementary colour. And I was pretty happy with the colour palette of it overall to be honest when I then add all the final details to it. It was something I could, was obviously struggling a lot more with earlier when I was still trying to figure out what the colours of the jacket should be. And I was still at the stage where I haven't fully detailed it yet, I still go in to add a couple more details here and there. It's weird though because the fish on the jacket was the part of the illustration I thought I was going to be most sure on what I wanted. So initially I wanted like basically goldfish, so I wanted the fish to have like a nice gold shine to them and then they were like really shiny and they had, I was like going to add like all color, color dodge and like the add effects to them. Uh, but in the end I actually sort of, as I was rendering more of the jacket, this became something that I didn't do in the end and I was becoming more unsure of what color that the fish should be. Um, and it's weird how like you can have something when you start an illustration and you're so sure on how a particular uh, certain part of the visual is going to look and then by the end of it that's the part that you're actually struggling with the most. I mean I didn't stray too far away from the gold idea, it just became more of like an orangey red kind of gold I guess you could say. Um, but I was, yeah, overall I was just really happy with how the rest of it looked. Usually character rendering is something I do struggle with a bit. It, especially with just like all the different kinds of details you want to add. Um, 
how much line work should be used for it, it's all these sort of questions you ask yourself and you become more unsure of as the illustration's going on sometimes. It's just what I love to do though, I think for like the next one maybe I do, I try and experiment with different other kinds of sort of like so different types of line weights, different types of ways of doing like the colours and the shading. Just keep trying to experiment and try new things because then that's how you can find the the types of methods then that work the best for you. Anyway, thank you so much for joining what I think is at the moment my longest video I've done. I couldn't get this any shorter without um, the, the time lapse just going really, really, really fast. It's hard to keep track of it. Um, but no, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining for this video and I will see you in the, the next one. And I'll show the end illustration of how this looks and if you want to have a more in-depth look then I'll have it posted to my Instagram as well. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.